My boss, who is an E6, gets $9,000 a month. My E6 boss with dependents gets $12,000 a month. How much money the military gets paid is a very broad topic that can change pretty drastically based on a number of factors, and we're going to cover all of them, including with examples of my own pay stubs. First of all, military pay is an important topic that's frowned upon, but it should be discussed because like any other job, you want to know how much you're going to be paid before you take the job, not just take the job and then see how much the paycheck comes as once you finally get it. So according to surveys done by Resume Lab and Adobe, 80 to 85% of people our age don't even apply for jobs if the salary is not listed. And that's my job here today is to tell you how much the military makes and you can make a decision based upon that information. So first of all, military pay is recorded on an LES or a leave and earnings statement, which is the exact military equivalent of the civilian pay stub. All military branches are paid the exact same. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, Space Force, they're all paid the exact same based on their Department of Defense pay grade. You'll also receive an annual increase in your pay in order to match inflation. So if inflation is 4%, the government will raise your pay by 4% in order to match it. Otherwise, you would lose purchasing power without losing an actual dollar amount. And that's without any increase in your rank or any difference in your location or anything like that. Now out of all the different ways you collect money from the government, the only one that's actually taxable is your base pay, which is the basic DOD pay grade amount that you're paid from the government every month. How much money you get paid is based on a variety of factors and we're gonna go over all of them. Number one is your rank, which is where you fall in the ranking structure. So when you first join, you might be an E1, an E2, or an E3. Or if you're an officer, you might be O1, O2, or O3, depending on what kind of skills you had before you joined the military that might give you a higher rank as soon as you show up. In a pretty extreme case, if you join the Navy as an already professional musician, you can leave boot camp already in E6, the sixth rank, just for joining. So besides what rank you are, they also take into consideration how long you have been at that rank. So I'm an E4 in the Navy, and I just received it. I am not gonna be paid the same as somebody that's been an E4 for three years. That person makes more than me. So they've been at the same rank I am for three years. I've only been in there for about a month. They're making much more because of their time in rate than I am. Number two, it depends on your location, your home state. If your home state has really high taxes, you're gonna be paying a higher tax rate. If you're in the continental US, you pay federal income tax. Over here in Bahrain, where I am, over here in the wonderful Middle East, it's a tax-free country, which means I pay no federal income tax and I pay no state income tax totally legal. And that's the number one reason that people volunteer to stay in this country is because it's tax-free, which is huge savings versus somebody that's paying taxes at a different command. Another thing about your location is depending on where you go, where you're stationed, you might get hazard duty pay or hardship duty pay. So if you're in a country that doesn't have the cleanest air, the cleanest water, isn't like the safest country, you can get bonus money put onto your check. So on my check here, for example, there's an extra $100 every check because of the hardship that we have here. Hardship duty pay can vary between $50, $100, and $150. Number three, it depends on your job. One example is hazard pay, and that's an extremely broad topic. I'm gonna to put every example of hazard pay in the description of this video. The amounts can range between $110 and $240 a month. I'm gonna put all of them in the description to save time. There's also special duty assignment pay for like special warfare and nuclear submarines and that can be between $75 and $525 a month extra. So if you speak foreign languages and you work as an interpreter or for some other function, you can receive $500 to $1,000 extra per month capped at $12,000 annually for your specialized skill. The next item on your pay stub is your BAS, your basic allowance for sustenance. Basically, it's the money that the military pays you so that you can get food. As long as wherever you are, whether it's a landside command or a ship, a galley or a cafeteria is available, you do not receive BAS. But if there's some sort of a situation where the Navy cannot feed you, they will give money for you extra, the BAS, to go eat in addition to whatever other pay you already receive. By the way, that amount does not change based on your number of dependents. So you can't say like, I have 17 children I have to feed, give me more money so I can feed them. It doesn't work that way. Next up is the COLA, the cost of living adjustment. So if you're living in a very expensive area, they might give you a little additional money so you can buy stuff there. So like here again, if you want a drink, 12 bucks a shot. 
$12 for a shot of tequila, $12 for whatever you want or up. So it's more expensive to live here. So we do receive a COLA, a cost of living adjustment. It's on my pay stub that we're getting to. And that's an extra additional amount put onto the check on top of what you already receive. Next up is a BNA, a basic needs allowance. So if you fall on some kind of major hardship, if you have a sudden drop in income, you can receive BNA to help you out from the military. There's also the family supplemental subsistence allowance, which is pretty similar. Next up is the DLA, the dislocation allowance to help pay for expenses between moving from one command to another. And there's also the family separation allowance, which can be $250 a month. Now it has to be separation from your dependents. It can't be separation from your cat. It can't be separation from your parakeet. Separation from your actual dependents, wife, kids, husband, stuff like that. If you're separated from those dependents, you can receive family separation pay of $250 a month. By the way, a family separation allowance is not authorized at locations where your family, your dependents can be moved to where you are on government expense. So the military will actually pay for your family members to be moved to you if that's allowed. If it's not allowed, you receive the $250 a month. Next up is sea pay. You get paid a little bit extra for being at sea on a ship. There's also clothing allowances. And unfortunately, it's not for buying a suit like this. It's for buying uniforms. And the Coast Guard is the only branch that actually offers a monthly clothing allowance every year. The next big line item on your pay stub, your LES, is going to be the basic allowance for housing, or BAH, which is like a large, flat amount that they give you to basically live out in town because you either ranked up or because a barracks room is not available. So they're going to give you a flat amount, say $5,000 a month, $3,000 a month. It changes depending on where you are. So like in Bahrain, it might be more expensive. In California, it might be really expensive. But in Wisconsin, where I'm from, it might not be very much at all. And it's enough for you to take that amount and go show it to a landlord and say, this is what my budget is. I'm applying for your unit. The rent is 1200 bucks a month. My allowance is $2,000 a month. So I'm going to put down 1200 a month on this apartment to rent it. And I'm going to take the other 800 and just pocket it. You're supposed to use it for utilities, electric bill, water bill, heating bill, stuff like that. But you can pocket the difference if you really play your cards right. The amount of money that you get for BAH is completely based on your rank, your duty location, and how many dependents you have. So if you have a wife and kids, you get more BAH than somebody that's just single. If you want to calculate how much BAH you get before you get to a command or before you join the military, you can go onto the Defense Travel Management Office website. I'm going to leave a link in the description. Type in a zip code, type in where you want to go, how many dependents you have, and it will calculate exactly how much BAH you should get once you get there. So I have the great pleasure of living in this barracks room. It's a nice room, it's rent free, but it means that I receive virtually no BAH because I can't live out in town unless I just take my actual military pay and pay for a rental unit, which would be stupid to do because I can just live here for rent free. But once you reach E5 in the Navy, you are allowed to get BAH in a very significant amount and you can live out in town at Navy expense. If you're stationed overseas, you don't receive BAH. Instead, you receive OHA, the Overseas Housing Allowance. And the difference is the Navy has a copy of the lease for wherever you're staying at. And instead of keeping the difference for utilities with OHA, whatever amount you get, they give you enough to pay for the lease, to pay for the rent of the unit that you picked, and then they keep the difference. So with BAH, you keep the difference. With OHA, the Navy keeps the difference. And again, on the DTMO office website, you can look up a calculator and you can see an example of what you should get if you get OHA at a different command if you go to Germany or Bahrain or wherever you're going. There's also incentive pay for officers, especially in the medical and aviation fields. If you're a pilot, if you're a dentist, if you're a doctor, a surgeon. And the idea behind that is because in the military, you may make a lot less money than you would in the civilian world for doing the exact same job. So if you're a military dentist, in order to try to keep you, they'll try to pay you more and give you incentive pay because otherwise that person might leave and go become a dentist in Oklahoma 
versus a dentist in some Navy base. So military paychecks are on the 1st and the 15th. They're direct deposited directly into your account. And depending on what kind of account, the payday can vary a little bit being earlier or being on exactly the 1st or exactly the 15th. So now it's time for the part you were waiting for, for me to actually go over some paychecks that I received from the military. So I picked out two. I joined the US Navy in 2022. I graduated boot camp in June and I went to A school. So A school is the military college basically that you go to after boot camp to learn your actual job. That's when this paycheck is from. So I was paid as an E2 at the time. The reason for that is because I passed the depth test if you're interested in that, I made a video about that separately. So the base pay for the month, this is the whole month, was $2,054.70. Federal income tax was $95.03. Social Security, $127.39. Medicare, $29.79. SGLI, that's life insurance that you have to pay for while in the military, $25. Wisconsin state tax, $101.50. Whatever your home state is, that tax is gonna follow you around the world, unless it's a tax-free country like Bahrain is. AFRH, 50 cents, that's for paying for retirement homes. TSP, that's like a 401k of the military, $41.09. So the total for the month was $2,468.88. And deductions were $1,630.45. The mid-month pay was eight fifty fifty five. That's the check I received in the middle of the month. And then the end of month would be on the 1st is eight thirty eight forty three. Now $1,700 for the month is not a lot. I understand that. And it was less than I was making in the civilian world. But you have to understand and remember that I was in school at the time, military college, basically, like I said. I wasn't working my actual job. And that's when this comes into play. This is the next check that I picked out. It was June of 2023, so not that long ago, unless you're watching this way in the future. Hello, future people. So it's got my name on it, and it's being paid as an E3. So I'm actually a petty officer third class, master at arms third class, or MA3 for short, but I'm still being paid as an E3, which is the rank before me, because it takes six months to be paid as your actual rank after you pick up. So in June 2023, I picked up third class, I'm still being paid as an E3, a uh, MASN, because the pay hasn't gone into effect yet. So here's the check for June 2023. The base pay is $2,259.90. HDP, we went over what that is, $100. COLA, we went over what that is, $343.98. Medicare tax taken out, $32.77. SGLI, $31. AFRH, Traditional TSP, 4520. The mid-month pay is $1,290.09. The American Friends of Armed Forces is taken out. That's $10 a month. That's a charitable donation I volunteered for to help military families. So the total for the month is $3,195.24. Deductions, that's all the stuff they take out, $1,926.67. There is no federal tax and no state tax because Bahrain is tax free. How wonderful. Allotments, $10, that's the charitable donations. The mid month paid on the 15th is $1,290.09 and the end of month, July 1st, 2023 is $1,258. So that's how much I'm actually being paid here for the moment. In December, 2023, my E4 pay is gonna kick in and it's gonna be increased by a little bit. Now maybe you're already working and making more than that. Maybe you're looking at the military being your first job and you're saying, wow, that sounds like a lot of money. Well, it, it gets even better. So in A school and C school, my paychecks were around 850 each, twice a month. And after I got to Bahrain, they went up to 1300. The primary reason for that increase was because Bahrain is a tax-free country. Also, I got promoted to E3 and then E4, even though I'm not being paid as an E4 yet. Now, I take home here about $2,600 a month. One of my bosses takes home $9,000 a month, and another one takes home around $12,000 a month. I really don't think it's a good idea to get sour about what somebody else is making because we don't understand everything about that person's life. Like, they might be making $12,000 a month, 
but they might have eleven or ten thousand dollars of expenses like a big house and debts and kids and a wife and a gambling addiction or things that we don't even know about. As with any paycheck you're going to receive in your entire life, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you actually take home and what you do with it. Do you actually buy productive assets, invest it, put some into savings, or do you spend it all on cigarettes, vapes, and coffee?